Here are the best Switch games of 2022, arranged by PlayScore. If you didn't know, the PlayScore is the aggregate of critic and gamer reviews. At number 10, Bayonetta 3. Ah, the pigtailed witch herself. This one got widely different ratings from critics. Some gave it a 6, while others closer to a perfect 10 out of 10. Is it the worst or the best of the series? Which is it? Blame it on the infernal demons that you can summon in battle. These incredible monsters can imbue Bayonetta with extra powers too. However, while they are active, Bayonetta can still sustain damages. You really have to be strategic about when you release your demons. For example, John in her 2D stealth missions or Viola with her unique movesets. These two may challenge the habits of long-term fans and ultimately contribute to the game feeling fresh all throughout. And with that, this highly replayable game gets a play score of 8.9. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle was an unexpectedly great game. The sequel is even better. This seems to be the running theme of the video so far. Sparks of Hope gets its name from Sparks. These cute little creatures give buffs that you can mix and match with the 9 characters you unlock in the game. Since a lot of characters can already be unlocked after beating the first world, it's so much easier to learn how they sing synergize with each other, making this tactical RPG that much deeper. As expected, this Mario game remains accessible to anyone from little kids to adults. Actually, maybe this time even more so with a customizable difficulty, like how much health is restored at every new level, enemies' health and damage, and more. Sparks of Hope shines with a play score of 8.9. At first, it might seem a little bit redundant. Why would Nintendo release Splatoon 3 when we already have Splatoon 2 on the Switch? Well, that's because they made it better. Quality of life improvements, better visuals, better lobby systems, new classes, new weapons, and even new moves. If you've played Octo Expansion on Splatoon 2, this one might feel very familiar. Even down to the server problems, let's be honest. But the new story, the training systems, and all the little things Nintendo added on this release nets this game a play score of 8.9. It's truly shocking how No Man's Sky works on the Switch. This is what happens when the team keeps working on making their games better. <coughs> Pokemon! Is it the most high definition version of the game we can play out there? No. But games are more than just their graphics. This one remains to be an interplanetary explorer's dream. Plus, there's so much to do! Learning alien languages, looting other spaceships, or even just building your home on an idyllic planet somewhere. However, we really miss having the multiplayer mode on the Switch version. As a single-player-only experience, it gets a play score of 9. Now, if you want to play multiplayer, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Redder's Revenge is a great pickup. Sure, you can play this solo, but it's just not the same. Shredder's Revenge is a great tribute to old-school arcade beat-em-ups from the art direction down to the controls and mechanics. The story mode is so much fun and easy enough for beginners to enjoy, while arcade is the mode where most veterans will get their fix from. This one gets a 9 out of 10. Up next, we have I, The Somnium Files Nirvana Initiative. For the uninitiated, this one's a murder mystery visual novel with hard puzzles, great writing, and a cast of perky characters. The way we solve the mysteries in this game involve going deep into our suspect subconscious to look for possible clues and motives. New in Nirvana Initiative are the VR sequences for recreating crime scenes. This reminds me so much of Detroit Become Human's Connor's investigation scenes. I don't want to spoil it, so that's it for this game that has a play score of 9.1. The next game sucks. Kirby and the Forgotten Land! This post-apocalyptic cute as heck game about a pink ball who likes to suck just feels so right. This is how Kirby should be played, in a true 3D setting. Kirby games are primarily aimed at kids so they're usually super easy but this one's finally got a wild mode. It's still not Elden Ring hard, of course, but we finally get a hint of a challenge for older Kirby fans. This Adora ball gets a play score of 9.1. Previously only on PlayStation 4, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. As Jane from Motoplay.com puts it, there are some stories that would only work in video games. This one is a perfect example. This game has an extremely complex story starring 13 playable characters who are destined to eventually pilot machines called the Sentinels. During mech battles, frame rate drops are noticeable but ultimately don't affect gameplay all that much. And so it gets a play score of 9.2. Five years after first being released on PC, the Switch finally gets Nier Automata The End of Yorha Edition, which is the base game and all the DLCs in one package. And it is nothing short of a miracle. While it's not as detailed as on other platforms, it's crisp and vibrant. It only runs on 30 FPS on the Switch. Whoa, big surprise there. But it's absolutely fine. Frame rate drops for this big of a game is expected on the Switch, but it doesn't happen enough times to spoil the experience. This portable version of a modern classic gets a play score of 9.2. And the best Nintendo Switch game of 2022 is Poke It Nope.
I'm kidding. <laughs> it's Xenoblade Chronicles 3. This was so worth the wait. Just like Nier, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is a revelation on the Switch. It's a huge, open-world jam-packed with incredible action and well-rounded characters. Honestly, more than anything, the characters and the relationships they build with one another is the highlight of the game. There are so many meaningful moments that aren't just exposition dumps sprinkled throughout. By the time you finish the 100 hours needed to complete the game, you'll be attached to all of these guys. So yeah, it's been fun. Play score of 9.3.